Okay, sorry, we have a start of the lecture. Okay, so uh, we're going to uh, finish a little bit from the last lecture. Uh, basically, it's a topic on linearization and total differential. Okay? Uh, this total differential concept, you will need that for, uh, for one of the assignments in assignment number three. Okay. So assignment number three, uh, it's one to three will be uh, the contents for a midterm. Okay? Now, um, and then after finish this one, we'll talk about uh, an interesting concept called gradient of a function. This is a very, very useful concept okay, in uh, many different kind of areas. Okay? So linearization and a total differential, I'll start from a very simple one uh, here. Uh, essentially, if you recall that, uh, if I have a single variable function, f of x here, so y equal to this, um, in 2D uh, plane, uh, if I draw it uh, here just arbitrarily, so maybe it's a curve like this, right? Okay. So often in time, uh, what we're interested is, okay, uh, at x equal to a certain location, for example, x equal to a, uh, how can we do to approximate okay, the change of this function f of x at here, right? So basically, that's what we call linearization, because this is not a linear function. Uh, if we can find a linear function to approximate the chain, and the things can get a bit of uh, easier in terms of calculation. And we know that uh, for, for this case, what we do is we generally, we can use a straight line, right? We can use a straight line to approximate the change of this function f of x, okay? Got to draw a better straight line. Okay, so you can use a straight line to approximate the change of this function around x equal to a here, right? And then in the, uh, in the uh, uh, first year we learned, for this particular straight line, it has a slope Okay, which is f of prime at a location. Okay, so you take the derivative of this function, you plug x equal to a into it, and that's the slope of this straight line. So this straight line passing through x equal to a, okay, and of course, and this is f of a, okay, so the straight line passing through this point with this slope, and we're able to uh, construct this uh, straight line at here, right? So, so that's straight line. So that straight line equation is what? It's, uh, I'm not going to use a y, maybe I'll use a, a, a slightly different symbol. Uh, L of x equal to f of a plus the slope and min multiplied by x minus a, right? So this is the <coughs> this is the line equation for this one in here. So this line can be used to approximate this curve at uh, location x equal to a. Okay? Yeah. So. at x equal to a. Okay, so now um, consider this extreme case. If there is a small variation okay, of x around this x equal to a. Okay, so basically from x equal to a, we started to uh, vary it very slightly. Okay, and uh, so from x equal to a, to uh, x equal to a plus delta x, okay? So that's a small variation, right? Okay. If this is a change at here, then if I plug this change into this straight line at here, okay? Into this straight line, okay? So the question is, how much of a change, okay? <coughs> in this street along the straight line at here when you have a change of x equal to a to x equal to a plus delta x. Okay? Yeah. 
So by the way, uh, I thought I was probably showing this straight line is basically, if you recall, that's basically called linearization. Okay, this is essentially, this is a linearization, okay, of uh, this y equal to f of x, okay? It's basically, that's a linear, because this is a straight line, it's a linear equation now, right? Yeah. Now, let's do this. If x equal to a, uh, vary that, okay, around this, this, so basically let x or a plus delta x, so then what do we do? We replace the x, okay, we replace, replace the x with a plus delta x. So you get x l uh, a plus delta x and equal to f of a plus f prime a. Then x is replaced with a plus delta x. a plus delta x minus a, you end up with what? Delta x, right? Delta x, okay? So that's the value of this. Uh, uh, that's the value when you change from a to delta x. So a plus delta x here, okay? <coughs> That's basically uh, the change. What's the change here? So, right, uh, there should be a small change like this at here, okay? Yeah. Was that good? Yeah. So, now often in time, what we, what we really wanted is this. What is the difference? Because this is the approximation of the original function at y equal to f of x. Uh, this is approximation. Basically, uh, this is not exactly the same thing as the original curve, right? So you probably wonder, okay, what's the difference between the original curve and this approximation at here, right? The, di the, the, the difference between these two. So basically, what, what, you, what you really want is, you want to use this to approximate this one at here. So in other words, so the, the original y, right, the original y is approximately equal to this, right? It's approximately equal to this. So y equal to approximately this, okay? y equal to approximately this one here. That make sense? Okay? So if I get back to this case here, now my now my x changes from x equal to a to a plus delta x here. Look what happens over here, right? So this y is basically your, this y is basically your original function f of x, okay? This original function f of x. So then my f of x plus, sorry, my f of uh, x changes from a to delta x, okay? This one. And that equal to approximately equal to f of a plus f prime of a delta x, okay, delta x. Is that good? Yeah. So x, right, is moved from a to a plus delta x. This is the current location of x. It's being approximated using this function here, okay, like this. So. Now I'm going to move this to the left side here. Okay. Like this. Okay. So, guess what? Now, f of a plus delta x minus f of a at here, right? And what's this one here? See, this, this is your x equal to a location, the corresponding y value. And this is the corresponding y value at where? At x, x equal to a plus delta x. So basically, this is f of a value at a plus delta x, that function, okay, this is a function y equal to f of x, and you have another value over here, and this value is f of uh, a plus delta x, okay? Yeah. So this value minus this value, you got a difference, right? You got a difference here, okay? And that difference, basically, we can call that delta y, okay? Delta y. <coughs> okay. So now if I let delta x go to a very small quantity, go to dx, then for this particular 
equation added here, okay, so what does that mean? That means this distance here, this delta x distance, is being shrink, shrink, shrink <coughs> to a very, very, very small dx there. So when it's shrink to very small dx, then this delta y becomes dy now, right? That's basically the precise uh, dy. That equal to f of a dx. Okay? Yeah. Does that make sense? So after I do all of these things, actually it's nothing new. So if I divide it by d dx over here, what do we get? We get dy over dx equal to f of a prime at a here, right? That's, that's essentially a derivative, isn't it? Right? Essentially a derivative. But here is a new thing here. For this quantity here, okay, for this quantity, this dy, this is called differential. Okay, this is called differential here, okay? It's differential. So, what's the differential now? If I relate this, this quantity, what I did here, dy equal to this, back to my linearization, okay? Back to my linearization here. This is basically the quantity after you change your x equal to a to x equal to a plus delta x when delta x is very small. Does that make sense? Okay, so basically, you see, if delta x is very small, then the delta change in the vertical direction along the straight line will be the same as the vertical difference along this original curve y there, right? Yeah, that's the quantity called differential, okay? And this is the, the differential concept in a simple uh, scalar function, um, the uh, si single variable scalar function case. Okay, yeah. So then let me extend this just slightly to a multivariable case. So now, actually, if I consider, I only consider this uh, function of the two variables here, okay? Actually, I touched upon this concept in the previous lecture. If we have a function of two variable, z equal to f of x, y. Now, if we plot this out, you know what this is. When well, this is actually, what, in 3D space, this is a... Uh, Surface, right? This is a surface. So, what would be a, an approximation, proper approximation of this uh, surface at certain, around certain point here? So, what would be an approximation okay, of this z equal to this okay, at let's say x naught, y naught location, right? Yeah. So that's basically a similar concept as we just finished for a straight line there, right? So you have a surface, okay? You have this, this is a point x naught, y naught, okay? And that's the corresponding point on the surface. Uh, how do we approximate the change along the surface as you have a change around this point x naught y naught. That's what we mean by uh, approximation. Okay? Yeah. So basically, maybe the x naught y naught will change to x naught plus delta x and y naught plus delta y. Right? Yeah. So imagine that if there is a change of coordinate here, then that point will change along the surface. So what would be an approximation okay, for that change? Okay. So if a curve in 2D is approximated using a straight line, and we actually uh, uh, talked about it in the previous lecture, then we can actually use a what? <coughs> a plane to approximate this change, right? Yeah. So the question is, right, how do we get the plane and what does it look like? So basically, uh, this whole thing comes from, okay, uh, if you actually know that it comes from basically Taylor series, okay? But there are different ways of deriving this one here. Um, for function of uh, two variables, okay, for function of two variables, uh, I'll just show you the quick one, quickly here. If you do an Taylor expansion for a function of two variables, and you learn Taylor series for a function of one variable, right? And this is what? This is 
uh, f of uh, x naught y naught okay okay plus f x x naught y naught uh, x minus x naught uh, plus f y at x naught y naught y minus y naught okay so let me explain what this is and plus some higher order term Okay, some higher order term. So I'm neglecting the higher order term here for Taylor series. You, you, you're going to have a second order, third order, and then it goes beyond to <coughs> infinite. Okay, that's Taylor series expansion. <coughs> okay, so now we said we wanted to approximate. Approximate meaning what? Meaning I'm going to neglect this higher term in here. I'll just look at the, the only look at this term, this and this. So what do we end up with? And we end up with this FF here. Approximately, right, because you're neglecting higher term. So this one will be approximately equal to this. Okay, I'll explain what uh, this each one of this means that is here. Okay. Okay, right. That's the approximation now. Right, the problem for approximation. So, what what are each one of term? First of all, this one. This is just basically means you plug the substitute x and y naught into the original function. That's the scalar value here, right? And what does this mean? That means you 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 calculate the partial derivative of f over x and then substitute the current location x not y not into the partial differential equation uh, expression. Okay, and that's the same thing. Calculate partial f over partial y first, and then sub this x not x y not value into it. Okay, so basically, if you look at this final approximation here. Look at this final approximation. What is this thing here, right? The approximation. Essentially, if I just look like, just look at, okay, the left, the right side here. This is an expression here, right? This is an expression. If I let it equal to l x y, okay, to a certain uh, certain variable l here. First of all, you, you got to convince yourself this is a quantity, right? This is a basically a scalar value, a certain value, one or two or three, doesn't matter. And this is another value. This is another value here. Okay? Yeah. So what is this thing here? A of x y equal to this plus this plus this. This is actually what is this thing here? So remember. The plane equation, what's the plane equation? It's A, B, C. Was that right? So, can we see this is L, X, Y equal to this, this plus this? Can we relate that to this plane equation here? This L is basically the Z at here. Okay. So this quantity is basically which quantity? Mm -hmm. D. There's no D. Zero. This is this quantity is basically this quantity here. So maybe maybe I'll write this one here just to, to make it. Here, so I'll rewrite this one. So this quantity, this expression is negative f x x minus f x x naught y naught x minus x naught minus f y x naught y naught y minus y naught and then plus L x y minus f of x naught y naught. From here to here. That makes sense? 
So essentially, see this is this L L L of x y equal to this whole expression here, right? What did I do? I basically moved everything, moved everything to one side. Okay. So you look at this one and you compare to the plane equation. What is the a value? Which is this one. And the b is and c equal to what? What's the c value? Zero. No. What's the c value? C equal to one, right? C equal to one. Can you see that? So, remember what does ABC represent? What does ABC represent? Perpendicular vector to the plane. Yeah. So right now, what is the perpendicular vector now? This one, this one, and one. Okay. And where does the plane go through? Goes through x naught, y naught, z naught. Yeah, that makes sense, right? That's where you want the plane is. The plane goes through that point. Which point goes through this point here, right? This point is x naught, y naught, and z naught. Okay. Yeah. And that plane, okay, is a tangent plane, as we're gonna. I'll show you later. Okay, that plane is a tangent plane. Okay, but as you can see now, the point here is this. Okay, this one, this one here, is an approximation of the original surface z equal to f of x one. That's approximation. If you are using the what? You are using the plane to approximate the original surface. Okay, yeah. Just like the curve, you're using the straight line to approximate the original curve. Okay. Okay. So now let's do the similar stuff here. Okay. If we have basically, if we have a, sl a small change like what I wrote here, if we have a small change around this x naught y naught location, so basically a change from here to here. Now, I'm not sure how does it change, you see, because this is not the uh, 2D case. When you have a change around x naught, y naught, basically your change could be here, here, you know, everywhere around that point here, right? Everywhere around it, okay? Yeah. If you have this kind of change, then based on this approximation, look at this one, based on this approximation here, so we, what we're going to do is we're going to replace this x, this y, with a change there. So basically, we're going to replace this x with x naught plus delta x and y naught plus delta y, okay? And x naught, y naught, this is not, there's no difference, and then fx, I'll skip this bracket here x is x naught plus delta x, okay? So x is x naught plus delta x. Minus x naught, what do we end up with? Delta x, right? Delta x. And then the f y, delta y, okay? So that's the change, okay, uh, after a small change around x naught, y naught point. Then we're going to move this term to the left side, okay, this term to the left side, okay. So guess what? When you move this term to the left side here, you end up with basically, see, this is a value at x naught y naught point. And that's the value at where? At x naught plus delta x, y naught plus delta y. So together, this minus this give us delta f, right? So small change of this Basically, the the, uh, the altitude of the surface, right, as you're moving around this location x now. So when you're moving somewhere to here, then you are maybe located here now. So there's a vertical, there's a difference, right, along the surface. So that's a delta f equal to f x delta x plus f y delta y. Okay, delta y. 
Now we do the same thing. Now we're going to let delta x, delta y to approach infinitesimal small quantity. So delta x go to dx, delta y go to dy. Okay, go to dy. So if this small is so small, you know, this change is so small, then that means this delta f here is going to become the df like this. And that equal to fx dx plus fy dy. So this is a new expression that I wanted to cover for the first topic. This is what we call the total differential. Okay, this is the total differential. Okay. So, you know, you spend uh, almost 30 minutes just, to, just for this expression here, right? Well, you look at this one here, do you know how to calculate it? Actually, you see, first to understand, okay, this d at here, okay, remember the, cal the journey of calculus often mentioned, you have uh, this journey here. So these basically are operators. Okay, those are operators. So this small d here is an operator. So this is somewhere you probably uh, uh, don't see often in particular in, front of in the first year. Uh, in first year, usually what we do is a df over dt like this, right, together. But you gotta, you got to be aware that you can use this d as an operator itself. Okay? So for example, uh, if this y equal to f of x, so what is the what is df over dx, right? That's you see that's the uh, y prime equal to this. Is that right? Yeah. So you see that on the bottom on the top here, I what I can do is I can df equal y prime and then what? Dx. Okay? Dx. That's actually this. We here we don't call it total differential. Here, remember at the beginning, what do we call it? I call it differential, right? Differential. Why don't I call it total differential? Because this one involves what? Multivariable at here, okay? Multivariable. So coming back at here, the physical meaning. What does that mean? The physical meaning basically means if you have a function, right? If you have a function of this. How does this function change or vary as you vary the x by dx, the y by dy here? You know what I'm saying? So basically, this guy here, right, varies, okay, according to this one here. If, okay, if there is a dx and a dy a change. Okay? How does it vary? You use this formula to do this variation, to calculate this variation. Okay? Yeah. So, one very rigid, or not, well, not for us, not sometimes it's, you know, we neglect the fact. You only use the equal sign. You only use the equal sign when you have the straight D here. Okay? Use the equal sign in the straight D. What if I use it here? It's a approximation sign. It's approximation sign when what? When you have this triangle here, right? Triangle here. So basically means this delta x is a bigger quantity than the dx, right? That makes sense? Okay. So one of the example basically often we use is this. How do we calculate uh, variations? How do we calculate variations? Uh, based on certain variation of parameters in the system. Okay, now I'll, I'll show you one example. Okay, basically one of the Simon uh, example there. Okay, so in other words, I'll rewrite this one. I'll rewrite this two at here. Okay, you have this formula to calculate the approximate change in function f. Okay, you have this formula to calculate the approximate change in function f. But this is not the total differential. Okay, this is not total differential. What is total differential? This one here. See the difference? Okay? Yeah. 
1 is equal, the other is approximate. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so let me show you an example here, okay? Uh, this example is uh, one of the assignments here. Uh, we have basically a resistor connected in series. Okay? Yeah. So when you connect the resistor in series, and we all know that the total resistance is what? Isn't that parallel? Oh, sorry, parallel. Yeah. Not sure what I'm saying here. Uh, total resistance is this one here, right? Yeah. Make sure I get this right. So, the question here is, so first of all, the question is, um, this is the total, total resistance R, and this one is R1 and R2. Now, we often, you know, we have, every time we use a function of x, y, right? But, you gotta be, you know, be comfortable. Basically, this is R is a function of what? R1 and R2, okay? Yeah, it's like a function of x, y, right? Yeah. Okay, so, let's, let's, uh, let's practice that formula first. What is the total differential? Basically, what is the total differential for this R here? R is a function. Right? What's the total differential for the R? Okay. So uh, get back to the formula. Total differential. Here, here's the formula. So what do we need to calculate to to uh, to obtain expression? I don't need to calculate dx. I don't need to calculate dy here. Okay. All I need to calculate is what? Is partial f over x, partial f over y. Does that make sense? Yeah. So basically, we know that dr will equal to something in here. And that's partial R over partial, in this case, partial what? R1. And then DR1. Okay? And partial R over partial R2, DR2. Okay, that's total differential. You don't need to calculate this too, okay? Not just the part of the formula. But you do need to calculate this and that. Okay? Okay, so I guess now. It's probably a pretty straightforward now because what's my R then? Right? What is the R function here? But this is not expressed in the uh, regular way that we used, right? In the regular way, we have a Z, you know, explicitly equal to function x, y. So, but you can do something out of here. So, what does it mean? The R equal to <coughs> R1, R2 over. Make sense? Right? So, can you calculate partial R over R1? Can you get partial R over R2? Okay? Yeah. So that's the way how you do that. Okay? So I'm not going to do that, but you can practice. Does that make sense? Yeah? No? Why? Who said no? <laughs> Why does it make not make sense? Uh, explain which part. I understand that like through like a different course, but can you explain how you did that through partials? Uh, you mean how do I calculate the partial yeah, derivative? Yeah. Well, I thought that was good and left that as exercise here. Okay, so can you uh, let's let, let me ask you this one here. Okay, can you calculate if I write this one here? Can you calculate partial f over partial x? Hmm? Raymond, can you calculate this? Probably, yeah. Probably. Okay, so if you, you say hesitation right here, uh, let me write this one here. Uh, how about uh, this one? Can you calculate df over dx? Yeah. So this one you can, right? So after you calculate this one, I replace the three with y, you get this. Huh? Was that good? Yeah. So I don't want to calculate this one here because I, I just want you to practice that though, huh? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And this x is our r1. The y is r2. 
All right? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Now, but I'm going to show you a slightly different way to do this question here, okay? So uh, I think you need to practice this uh, partial derivative or derivative things. Uh, so here is our equation, okay, for the total resistance, okay? Yeah. So now I'm going to do this. Remember what I said, the total differential operator, the D, this is an operator, okay? It's basically a derivative operator. Okay, it's a derivative operator. So for example, D brackets one plus T squared. So what does that give you? Two T and D T, okay? That makes sense? So if you're not used to this, it's a d over dt 1 plus t squared equal to 2t. Okay? So d is an operator. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this total differential. So basically I'm going to take a differential of both sides of this equation. It's like a taking out, I'm not taking derivative, I'm taking differential. Okay? Taking differential both sides. So taking differential both sides, let's see what happens. So d1 over r equal to d1 over r minus 1. d1 over r over <coughs> r2. Okay? Yeah. As a matter of fact, this d, this differential operator, it's a linear operator. What is a linear operator? What is a linear system? <laughs> what does the linear system satisfy? <laughs> Homogeneous and? So that's basically what the operator satisfies. It satisfies the superposition rule here. So this is why when I take a d out of here, I can separate this into this two portion here. All right? Yeah. So coming back here, taking differential, basically, this is one, forget about all of there, one over r. What is the derivative of one over r? Derivative of one over r is what? Negative one over r squared and dr. Can you see that, right? Yeah. This is differential right here. What is, the, what is the derivative of one over r1? Negative one over r1 squared and dr1. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll see myself in the next one there. <laughs> okay, does that make sense? And what are we looking for? We're looking for dr, right? We're looking for dr. So look at that. All we need to do is actually to do what? To get rid of the negative sign and multiply this r squared to the other side here, right? So we end up with what? dr will equal uh, r over r1 bracket square dr1 plus r over r2 square dr2. Okay? See, that's the total differential. Okay? Now, I want you to practice, I don't, uh, uh, still I want you to practice uh, uh, the, the one I just said it here, okay? This is a good practice. I think of particular for some of you who are not very comfortable with a partial derivative yet, okay? So you need to practice this, okay? Yeah. Okay, so, get back to this question right here. Uh, suppose that my R1 changes from 20 to 20.1 ohms and R2 changes to 25 to 24.9 ohms. Okay? So there is a small variation, maybe because of temperature or maybe because something else. Right? If this is the small change here, 
what would be the small change resulted in the total resistance R, right? Total resistance R. Okay? Yeah. So, if we're, we're required to capture this, so your formula is delta R equal to, or no, no, not equal to, actually is what? Approximate, right? Approximate to R over R1 square delta R1 plus R over R2 square delta R2. Okay? Yeah, that's the formula you can use. So, but you've got to be careful with one thing at here. What is delta R1? What is delta R2? And what is R? What is R1, R2? Now, we often use this, this the, the initial value. So this is initial value. The initial value will be our so-called nominal value, right? So that's basically what's given by the manufacturer, okay? So in our, in our case, so the R1 in here equal to 20, and R2 here is 25. So those are nominal value, okay? Those are nominal. And that's what you should use at here and here. So how about the R in here? So the R, you calculate the R using what? Using that formula, right? Using the formula, the total resistance. Okay? Now what about the delta R1? You go look at here. Delta R1 will equal the new value minus the nominal value. And delta R2 will equal to the new minus nominal, okay? Yeah, don't, uh, often in time you probably say, oh, this is negative, that's fine, you know, negative is, is okay, because it basically means there is a negative change in this R2 value, okay? Then you plug it in, you do the calculation. Was that clear? Yeah. Okay. So, take a look at the lecture notes, so there are a couple of more uh, other examples, so I'm gonna skip that, okay? But that essentially wrap up with the concept of the linearization and uh, the total differential, okay? So, uh, I don't give you a formula for midterm, but you know, if, if the question is, what's the total differential of a certain function? Then it's as simple as here, okay? Like this, total differential. So just write five times, I'm sure you'll memorize this, right? Yeah. Otherwise, 10 times, yeah. Okay, so now uh, let's start with a new concept. Any questions? It's all good? Yeah. So now let's start a new concept. So we're, uh, we've been uh, uh, getting away from uh, a vector field, okay, vectors. So now we're going back to vector now, okay? Uh, basically, what we're going to talk about is a new concept called <coughs> gradient vector or, or gradient a gradient of a function. Okay? Yeah. So you probably won't be, be able to realize the uh, importance of this uh, gradient vector here. Okay? Uh, but uh, you will in the next in the next two years. There are many places uh, you will see this gradient uh, operation. Okay? Yeah. So I'll show you where the gradient coming come from. Okay, through uh, two different ways that are here. Okay. So let's just say starting from here. Let's say uh, first one. I'll give you a multivariable function. So let's consider a multivariable function like this, okay? I'll use the three variables, for example. You can use even two or four, it doesn't matter, okay? So if this is a multivariable function, and uh, suppose that the x and the y, z, they are a function of a t, okay? Yeah. So in a previous lecture, when we learned multivariable calculus, uh, one of the rules for chain rule, we had the two rules, right? Uh, the number one rule is, the chain rule is, when you calculate, let's say, if you plug x, y, z into this function, it's a function of a t now. So then the derivative of w over dt, according to the chain rule, is going to be partial f over partial x, and dx over dt, 
plus partial f over partial y dy over dt partial f over partial z and dz over dt okay that's a chain rule right okay so now watch carefully that uh, wha what uh, I'm going to do with the next step here okay yeah so now suppose that uh, suppose that we have uh, Uh, well, we don't really have to do it, but now let's do this, right? Okay. For the based on this expression in here, see this multiply this plus this multiply this plus this multiply this. I'm going to use the vector doll product to rewrite this expression. Okay. So vector doll product meaning I'm going to use two vectors dotting each other. And the first vector is, I'll write it, uh, just to use a shorter notation. The first notation, the first vector is fx, fy, fz, the, the three partial derivatives. Okay, three partial derivatives. And then the next vector, you probably should uh, be able to write it. What's the next vector? dx over dt, dy over dt, and dz over dt. Was that right? Yeah. So you, if you see, partial. pardon me? Yeah. Why did you write partial? It like, uh, doesn't matter. That's uh, the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just singing myself a few writings say here. Yeah. All right. So now look at the first one here. Okay. The first one right here, and that is what I call a gradient vector. So the first one here. So I'll rewrite that one. Now I'll rewrite it as what you like. So you might wonder, what are you doing? You, you know, why you sometimes write that, sometimes write this. So this is the first vector right here. And this one, I'm going to define it like this. OK? This is the inverted triangle like this f equal to the first vector. Is that good? Okay. <coughs> so this is the definition that we just introduced at here based on the observation. Okay? Yeah. Now this one here is what I call the gradient vector. And this is the gradient vector for function f. Okay? For function f. So, journey of a calculus, d to partial d to where? To this guy here. This one is a Greek letter called nebula. Okay? Yeah. A nebula or nebula, something like that. So, this is basically an inverted, uh, inverted triangle. Now, we, what we call it is we call it del. Okay. Okay. So del. So when you spell, you can spell del f. That's what it means here. Okay. So del f. Is that clear? Yeah. So just like this d here. Okay. This is an operator. Okay. This is another operator. This is actually another linear operator. So mathematically, often time, the operator is actually the refer can be can be used to refer to a system in engineering concept. Okay. Yeah. So uh, for this one here, because it's an operator, so basically sometimes we can write this uh, del as this. So partial over partial x plus partial over partial y and plus partial over partial z t hat. Okay, that's an operator. Operator meaning you use this and operate on certain things, right? You use this on the f, then you put f, f, f at here, right? That's what operator is. <coughs> okay? So, and sometimes we also use probably in the textbook, 
uh, you probably will also see that del f, and sometimes you also see this is written as gradf. Okay, gradf. So greeting f. Okay, so for now, the most important thing that you need to remember the gradient of the function f gives you a vector. Okay? Give you a vector. You see, in the uh, when we use a d, you use a partial, uh, you, you, you calculate partial derivative, you calculate the derivative, you, you end up with just a scalar function, right? In a scalar function. But now, if you use this del applied to a function f, a scalar function f, you end up with what? A vector. Okay? A vector. Yeah. That's the most uh, important difference uh, for now, right? For now. Okay? Okay. Before we get into the physical meaning, so if you explain what this is, this, this thing here, okay? So let me, let me show you <coughs> another place that we can see the application of this uh, greeting vector. Now remember what we just did, right? Remember what we just did. For a function f of x, y, okay, for this function f of y, so what did we use to approximate? We said that we use what? We use a, a plane to approximate. What's the plane that's... Right? That's the plane that we use to approximate the surface z equal to f of x, y. Okay? So, you look at the, if you look at this plane at it here, okay? if you look at this plane at it here, if I rewrite it okay, slightly, the next two terms, the next two terms here, I'm going to rewrite it as what? dot that make sense right yeah so the first vector at here this vector is actually according to my definition this is actually what del f right see this is a function this is a function of two variable that's why you only have f x f y here right in my previous uh, writing, I used the function three variable. So you have uh, uh, f x, f y, f z. Okay. Okay. See, this is the gradient <coughs> at here, right? This is gradient, and this is the gradient at which point? At this x naught, y naught point. Okay. No, y naught point. Okay. Then, if I extend this one more step over here, we're going to use this, we'll see that the usage of this. If I have a change of x, basically the change of x from x naught to x naught plus delta x, and y changes from y naught to y naught plus delta y. Okay? So this x and this is y, like this, okay, change to this uh, new location. Okay? <coughs> So guess what's going to happen in here now? So this is a function, this function f, x plus x naught, y plus y naught. Then I'm going to move this term, okay? Move this term to the left side. To the left side. Does, does y, does y not move by delta y? Oh, that's right, delta y here. Good point. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to move this to the left side here. So guess what's going to be the next side? The left side is according to our previous notation is actually what? The delta f, right? The delta f. Delta f equal to approximately this gradient vector at x naught, y naught, dot here. x is x naught plus delta x. Minus x naught, you end up with delta x, delta y. Can you see that? Right? That's a very short notation now, right? Expression. And what does this mean? This is basically means the vertical difference or the vertical change in the function f as you're moving around x naught y naught. And what's the proximate change? It's the gradient. It's the gradient of this dot the small change. 
That make sense? Yeah. So remember this one here, okay? Yeah, we will probably will come back to this uh, very shortly, maybe next lecture. Okay. Okay. So now get back to the grading vector. Okay. So then I will practice a few exercises. Then I will explain what grading vector is. Okay. So let's do hardcore, you know, physically a practice first, and then we'll understand what the uh, uh, greeting vector means here, okay? You know, without understanding anything, just practice the formula. Remember what a greeting vector, the formula is, right? So let's just say, I'll give you one example right here. W equal to f of x, y, z, three variables, and equal to x squared plus y squared minus 2z squared plus z l ln x. So here is the uh, here is the uh, uh, w right here. Okay, here's the w. Uh, can you calculate the gradient vector at location one one one? Okay, so calculate gradient vector at this location. Formula. Go back to the formula. What's the gradient vector? This is a formula. Okay. So calculate the greeting vector of this, and then find its value at 1, 1, 1. Okay? Yeah. So I guess I need to calculate partial f over partial x first, and then partial f over partial y, and partial f over partial z. So these are nothing new in here, right? Just the first order partial derivative. There's really nothing new. So when you take partial f over x, you treat others as constant. So, five seconds. This is 2x plus what? z over x. Right? Yeah. And what's the partial f over y? To y. Partial f over z? Okay. Yeah. Pardon me? So how did I get this one here? Hmm? This is z. This is z. And this is it. <laughs> What's wrong here? You treat Z as a constant, right? What What is it to of learning X? One over X. That's where this is from. Yeah, we're talking about partial. Oh, the last one. Oh, sorry. Uh, I missed one here. Yeah. Okay. Well, oh, I haven't finished writing yet. So, anyway. <laughs> 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 That's the beauty of being an instructor. You can't argue with me. So, anyway. Uh, then what we do is we sub the uh, one 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 into here 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 here. Uh, you apparently your del f equal to one 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 so three two negative four plus ln one zero so negative four. There, right? That's the uh, greeting vector. Okay. Yeah. So you probably should realize you should get rid of the fear for the greeting vector in terms of the calculation. This is so simple, you know, right? All you need is just a three partial derivative, you know, right? Yeah. So in terms of the greeting vector, in terms of the calculation, that's it. There's nothing comp more complicated than that. Okay. But however, uh, you do need to understand uh, the physical meaning behind this uh, greeting vector. Okay. That's what uh, you need to do. And also, I also need you to basically to uh, plot this greeting vector, okay, uh, in the either 2D space or 3D space. So let's let's take a look at the plotting first, and then I'll explain the physical meaning, okay? Yeah. So let's look at the second example here. 
Uh, suppose that I have a function which is this. Okay? Yeah. So this is the function of this. Uh, let's find this del f at one negative one point. Okay? One negative one point. So f is a function of two variables. So when you say f is a function of two variables, so that means the grading vector must be in what? In the x, y plane. Okay? Yeah. If it's a function of three variables, then the grading vector must be in the 3D space. All right? Yeah. So in this particular case, you calculate del f, and that equal to 2x negative 2y like this. Then del f at 1 negative 1 will just basically plug 1 here, 2, 1 there, 2. Right? So 2, 2. Okay? <coughs> okay. So now, I'll, uh, what the next thing is, uh, what does it mean? How do we properly draw these things here? Right? To draw these things here, you need to uh, basically know uh, roughly what the original surface looked like. Okay? So you look at this function, w equal to x squared minus y squared. If you recall in the previous lecture, uh, this I draw this one here. This is actually, uh, it, should, it should be this one. It's, this is actually a saddle. Okay? It's a saddle surface. It's a surface. What's the saddle? saddle? Remember the, the important saddle. Basically, there is a point here, right? And uh, that point, when you're moving around that point, it's, it's, it's not a maximum, it's not a minimum, because when you're moving around this direction, you're decreasing, right? But when you're moving along this direction, it's uh, increasing. Okay? Yeah. So, <coughs> Basically, coming back here, this grading vector, where is that grading vector? How do we plot that? So you look at this thing here, okay? This is your grading vector. At which point? At 1, negative 1. Okay, so first what you do is, see this is a surface. Where is x, y plane? And this is x, y plane here. Okay, this is x, y plane. Okay? Find the one negative one point. Where is one negative one point? This is x, so let's say this is y here, okay? So x equal to one, y equal to negative one, so where is the one negative one point? It's uh, here, right? It's here, okay? So I should, x, y plane should be this plane here, okay? So maybe I should draw it here, okay? Yeah, was that good? Just roughly. So then at that point, what is that grading vector that you just calculated? Which is what? 2, 2, right? 2, 2. So now you draw a vector from this location. You, from this location, you draw a vector 2, 2. So if I, if I, my question is, can you draw a vector 2, 2 without telling me anything? Starting from origin, how do you draw a vector 2, 2? You draw a vector starting from origin, where's 2, 2? So this is 2. This is 2, that's 2, 2, right? That's the vector. So now, you don't draw this starting from origin. You draw this starting from the location 1, negative 1. You draw the 2, 2 vector. Basically, if I, if I look, uh, give you in the, uh, in the x, y plane, where's the 1, negative 1? x is a 1, x is a 1, y is negative 1, so 1, negative 1, this is the location here, right? This is a 1, negative 1. And where is the vector 2, 2? It's here. So starting from here, you draw the vector 2, 2, like this. Can you see that? Basically, you parallelly move this vector to this location, from origin to this location. OK? Was that clear? That is the grading vector. OK? Where is it? It's there. Where is, where is it pointing to? 2, 2. OK? Is that clear? Yeah, very important because I think if you can visualize this, often in time you will understand the grading vector very much. Okay? So let me give you another example maybe uh, to illustrate the drawing here, right? Uh, let me see if I have an example here. So why don't you practice this one here? 
Okay. Let's say right now, I'll give you an, a surface. Click. This is a new surface, x squared plus y squared. Okay, so can you find the gradient vector at 1, 1? Okay, at 1, 1. Okay, so first of all, uh, you need to have the basic, basic visualization of what this one is. In the visualization of uh, uh, functional two variables, uh, we actually mentioned this is a surface. This is what we call a paraboloid, right? A paraboloid. It's a, it's a bowl, uh, you know, going up, right? And when you slice the bowl, when you slice the bowl with a plane, any plane, you end up with what? Circle. Circle. Okay? Very good. <laughs> so, we can draw control plot for this one here, and the control plot of this one, basically, it's a cluster of circles, right? Yeah. At the different value of this uh, z value. Okay? Yeah. So, now let's, uh, let's draw this uh, gradient vector here, okay? It's a function two variable, so gradient vector is a, uh, it's a vector in an xy plane. And uh, you calculate del f, and that's very easy, so 2x, 2y, right? 2x, 2y, so partial f over partial x, partial f over partial y. Sub the 1, 1 into here, so at the location is 2, 2, another 2, 2, okay? Okay, so then can you draw this Basically, this gradient vector. Draw this gradient vector together with the corresponding contour circle. Can you draw that? Okay, here is my question here. So draw the gradient vector and the contour circle. So use a proper scale, huh? Yeah. First of all, what would be a circle? Okay, what would be a circle? at this 1, 1 location. <coughs> See, this is a cluster of circles here, right? What circle passing through the 1, 1? Or in other words, you know, you plug this 1 here, 1 there, what's the z value? It's 2. So the radius of the circle is? No. Root Two, right? Yes. So, yeah. So you draw a circle with a radius of a root two, okay? And where's one one? So one one is here, okay? One one is here. So basically, when you slice this surface with z equal to two, okay? And you get a circle. You project the circle into the xy plane. That's the contour, okay, at that location. And our gradient vector is 2, 2. So the 2, 2, not starting from origin, starting from where? 1, 1 at here. So how much do, should you draw then? And how, well, what direction should you draw? So that's, if that's not clear, I think what you need, first you need to do is, let's draw from origin first. Draw from origin, draw the vector 2, 2. If I draw from origin vector 2, 2, which is actually what? It's here, right? It's here. Then what do you do? You move this, this one from origin to this 1, 1 location, okay? So basically, the new vector will be still along that direction, will be this, with the same length, okay? Same length. Is that clear? This is your del f, okay? This is the del f. <coughs> okay? Yeah. Okay, good. So, now, any questions? Oh, good. So now let's have some fun stuff here. What is the physical meaning of the gradient vector? 
right? Uh, maybe I'll show you a couple of the drawing first, okay? Okay, so uh, this is the paraboloid I just showed you there. And uh, in this case, I uh, use Malkov draw not just one greeting vector, but uh, lots, right? Uh, the greeting vector, the length, not necessarily is the same as the, uh, like, uh, the you know, like uh, the length at here, but it's in proportion, okay? As you can see, the greeting vector in this particular case is zero at this location, and it's basically, it's readingly going out, right? And it's the value, the length is increasing here, right? The length is increasing, okay? Yeah. Now, if I come back to this one here, uh, look at this, uh, look at this surface that is here. Uh, what is the minimum location of the surface? Where? It's uh, here, right? It's here. That actually coincides with what? With the, with the greeting vector of value which is zero, right? Which is zero. And the direction is going out, okay? The direction is going out. Corresponding to what? As, as you are going out of here, let's say you're walking out of here, okay? In this direction. And then suppose that you have another guy at the top there. What does that, that guy go? Does that guy go up or go down as you're walking out of here? It's going up, right? So, which means what? If I'm going along this gradient vector direction, Okay, going along this, basically, if there's a change of x naught, y naught value in the direction of the gradient vector, what would I expect for the change of this surface z equal to f of x y? Should I be increasing or should I be decreasing? Increasing. increasing. Very important, okay? So this is basically number one observation. Number one observation is, Gradient vector always pointing to the increasing direction of the function f. Okay, pointing to the direction of the increasing in function. <coughs> f, okay, in function f. So basically, as I said, if you walk in the direction f, <coughs> then you get increase in the function f. So this is in 2D, right? This is basically function 2 variable, you get all the greeting vector in the x, y plane. So if I have a similar case, so let's say 3D case. So let's say this is the function, z minus x squared minus y squared, right? That's a function of the three variables, okay? Yeah. Now, you can also draw the gradient vector, okay, for this function, let's say you draw it, okay, when it's zero, so this surface here. As you can see, you have, you, you get a whole bunch of uh, vectors, okay, pointing to a different directions. That's the gradient vector. Same thing. Those gradient vectors here pointing to the, this is actually f of x, y, z. Pointing to the direction of increase in this function here, okay? Yeah, same idea. Okay. It's just kind of hard to visualize it. Or you can, if you want to visualize it, basically this is one surface. Remember in the uh, multivariate set, there's a level surface. So you can imagine there is another level surface inside here. And there's another layer inside of here. You know, basically it's increasing that, okay? Yeah, in the direction of increasing, like the gradient vector. All right, yeah. Moreover, okay, but I cannot prove this one for now. I'll actually be able to prove both of them. The gradient vector not only pointing to the direction of the increasing in the function f, it's actually pointing to the direction of a maximum increase in the function f. Okay, so I'll save myself here. So maximum, you can write the rest of the words. Maximum increase, or the greatest increase. Okay, or the greatest increase in function f. Okay. Yes. So then how do we take we, that 
we did finding that ring, how we translate it into that. Very good. So let's just see here, right? So this is the ring you're, you're talking about here, right? And this is the greeting vector that we just find it out here. Does that make sense? So according to my conclusion, I'll, prove, I'll be able to prove this one here, okay? But let's just uh, understand what this conclusion means. If I walk in this direction, then I will get the maximum increase in the function f. Which is, which is the function f? This one. Function f representing which one? Representing this surface here, right? Represents this surface. So if I use this one here, let's say uh, where is one one? One one is uh, one one is somewhere actually somewhere over there. Okay. So basically, you see, if I go that way, imagine there is another guy at the, at the top of this surface there, and it's being controlled by the person at the bottom. So when you're walking in that direction, that one will also go up. Right? Go up along the surface. And that change is the maximum increase, is what we call the steepest ascent. You're climbing the mountain, right? I'm climbing the mountain here. And someone, you know, on the ground is going uh, in the same time as me. He's not climbing. So, you know, he's, but he's walking along the same, uh, along this direction here. So I'm basically following his direction. He said, okay, go this way. So what do I do? I go up, right? If he happened to go along the direction of the green raptor, then the climber will be going up in the maximum rate. Make sense? Yeah. So that's basically the physical meaning of a greeting vector. <coughs> greeting vector, just write 10 times. Greeting vector always pointing to the direction of the greatest increase of a function f. Doesn't matter if it's a function of the two variable or that function of three variable, or function of the four variables. Yeah. The highest point? Sorry, I couldn't understand. Does the gradient increase as like, you go further out in the function? Oh, uh, oh, you mean, does it go out and you increase more? Yeah. Like well, not necessarily. That depends on the function. Depends on the, because the one, the one that is here just happened to be like this, right? It really depends on the surface, okay? Yeah. Was that good? Now, I do want to mention one thing though, okay? Uh, what do I want to mention? Mm. I don't remember now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's use this one, just, just, you know, just find them. <laughs> okay, so let's just say you have a very uh, scientific, uh, high-tech uh, oven. And uh, there is a function temperature Okay, give in. And you're going to cook this uh, uh, the, the cookie dough here. Okay? So now, what happens is it, it's not just giving you corn in it, but also giving you the grating in it here. Right? So it spits out the grating when you place this, the, the dough at a certain location. So what does that mean at here now? So that basically means that's the direction. So this is three, four, five. That's the direction you should move your dough to there to get to the highest temperature and to cook it as fast as possible. <coughs> okay? Now, imagine this. What if uh, the cookie dough at already at the point of a maximum temperature? What will be the greeting vector now? Zero. Zero. So that's actually, you immediately have a, an intuitive idea about this so-called optimization. So when you, when you are optimizing some kind of mean and max, how do I know whether it's a mean or max? You, 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 you calculate the gradient vector to look at the value for that. Okay? Yeah. So we'll finish this in the next lecture. Okay? Yeah.